responsibility because as soon as something happens then people want the government to protect them if something happens to the kids then the parents want something to protect them well if you want to get rid of victimless crimes you have to have people to take personal responsibility for their actions you can't have it both ways and so that's the biggest thing if we take responsibility for our actions then we'd have a heck of a lot less victimless crimes yeah I mean and I'm not going to take this lightly I mean I I think that there are that we as a society are challenged with trying to determine what is the role of government and where does it stop what is victimless and, and, and what is kind of a gray area I grew up uh, in a household with an alcoholic so whether it's alcohol or drugs, I would, would challenge you to say, suggest that drugs or alcohol is not victimless. Um, I would like to say that certainly there have been law changes in this uh, country relative to alcohol consumption with age, and we have, I think, a disparity between uh, age for voting and respo supposedly personal responsibility. Uh, it's been extended now, I guess, a child is now 26. <laughs> Um, and so these things are all all over the map. So um, I, I think that we should be taking a hard look at these things as to what our definitions are and what is considered victimless and what is not. Where do you draw the line? Um, there are some drugs that are um, more recreational drugs. You can call you know, tobacco a drug. You can call marijuana a drug. You can call barbiturates drugs. I mean, they all have uh, different impacts on the physical and mental well-being of human beings. And so I think that we, we need to, as a society, um, and this is, so this is not, to me, it's something that, that is not at a local level. As a society, we need to take this into consideration and, and review where we draw the line. I think that we do have a sub significant uh, um, amount of our population in jail at a significant cost, and we should be focusing on bettering our society by educating and making people productive and self-sufficient, period. Councilor Roberts, you have the opportunity to ask one final question of Mr. Sutherland and Mr. Freeman. There's been a, a lot on the news about people um, <clears throat> hanging down by the 100 Night Shelter, hanging down the center of Keene, hanging down on Roxbury Street. <coughs> <coughs> but not Roxbury, Roxbury um, and Railroad. But there's really, if you look at Keene, for all the stuff we talk about Keene, there is no such thing as a community center or a drop-in center or anything for, for teenagers. What would you propose that the city council or the city do to help provide a service, to help provide an area for people to be people uh, well, as I suggested before, I think the city needs to sell off the 10% of the, uh, the property that they own here in Keene, with the exception of just a few city department buildings. I think that uh, if there were a resurgence of business in Keene, as, you know, as we talked about earlier, with lower uh, property taxes or even better yet, voluntary contributions, then that would encourage more businesses. And it would be likely that uh, some of those businesses would, uh, would cater to people who have a lot of disposable income. Uh, teenagers, you know, they're not paying rent, so they've got if they've got a job, they've got all kinds of money to spend. Uh, I wouldn't propose the city get into any kind of business. I, I agree with uh, Bob's point earlier; they don't need to be, uh, you know, making fish, and they don't need to be doing anything besides the basic bare minimums of uh, protecting life, liberty, and property. And right now, they're not doing that very well either. Um, so, the business that I worked for used to be in Peterborough. Peterborough acquired a building and tried to turn it into a teen community center with much fanfare. Um, I think the town of Dublin is doing something similar where they have some kind of community center that they're trying to develop. And um, I think that the intentions are, you know, positive, but the outcomes are failures. Um, people aren't showing up. But again, this comes back to free market. You know, we have a bowling alley. We used to have a drive-in theater. We have all kinds of activities around here that um, that, that, that that kids can can do. It's it's a matter of getting them outside, off the computer or 
Xbox or whatever the case may be. But um, I, don't, I don't think it's up to the city to try and figure out how to keep kids busy. Um, we do have all kinds of athletic, we market athletic programs. And so I don't know that that's the problem. Most of the people that I see hanging around uh, the city are either stuffing parking meters and, uh, and uh, or just smoking cigarettes and, and at the same time walking around with their strollers. Um, I, I think that we need to become a more productive, more self-sufficient society, and we need to lower the tax burden to welcome more businesses that will cater to the, the demands of the market. Thank you. And Mr. Sutherland, since I'm still not positive if the one question that you asked, Ian, was a follow-up or an actual question, I will let you ask one more question of Councillor Roberts and Ian Freeman. Uh, Councillor Roberts, you had uh, earlier mentioned that the people are moving out of the city of Keene and into other er or, or other folks are moving to the surrounding towns and benefiting from the school district. This is a school district that the school district created. This is your field of dreams, mister. You guys voted continuously to spend more on a high school, a middle school, whatever the case may be, with the red carpet open to all of these surrounding towns because that's how the Keene School sees as trying to drive the per student costs down rather than serving our direct community first and then, and then addressing the needs of other communities where possible. Um, what is, what is the, how does that translate as far as the way you voted and the way some of your uh, indications of votes on the city council have been as far as a build it and they will come attitude or let's focus on the taxpayer and the property owner first and servi servicing them as how a city, a proper s local government should serve? Well, first I can say is I didn't vote for the high school and I didn't vote for the middle school. I, w I was in the Marine Corps when the high school was voted for and the middle school I was voted off the school board because of um, cutting the budget. <coughs> and But I tell you what I did when I first came on the school board I had looked at the numbers and the numbers projected that by this time they'd have about 900 kids. And when, we went, when they went to the voters, they told the voters they needed an 1800 um, seat high school. And so that's why I worked to get the Winchester kids in to fill the empty spaces. The middle school, they kept building the middle school bigger because they said, well, the state is going to give us 50 cents, 57 cents back on every dollar. So let's get bigger and bigger and bigger. And <clears throat> as a lowest station, I'm um, kind of like Southwest Airlines. Every, every empty seat is costing us money. And now at the middle school, we're in a position, a situation that we created that we have to fill those seats. And filling those seats are, quote, solving some problems, but the filling those seats are cutting the keen tax base. And so, again, that's what's happened when the, the school system is looking at themselves and not paying attention how it affects the, um, the whole community. So when you look at Keene, these other communities are sending kids to the Keene school at a fixed rate, but also all these individuals are coming into Keene using the roads and the infrastructure and not paying a single penny tax on it, and that means the people of Keene have to have higher tax rates to cover those costs. We, a lot of the problems right here are self-inflicted. Thank you, and I would like to thank everybody that came out on this Saturday afternoon. Uh, I would have liked the attendance to have been much larger than it is. And if you have not yet cast a ballot in the straw poll, I would like to ask that you do that now. And once again, I would like to thank the candidates who took time out of their day to show up. And thank you for watching.
And if it's never finished, you go, that, that's the state. Because the state's you, first you look, at the, the look at the city, at the school board, you're lucky if you get 1,200 people to show up. Yeah, just, I have a question. Why do you separate alcohol from drugs? You don't think alcohol is a drug? I do. You said, but in your talk, you said alcohol and drugs. Alcohol are drugs. You say whether the problem is alcohol or drugs, like you put them in different categories. No, I'm saying Here's whether you're talking about alcohol or drugs or tobacco. tobacco. Like, yeah, like I they're, not, they're all drugs. I know, I mentioned them all. I said they're okay. all levels I don't know what to do of drugs. I don't have to send it in. Yeah, I think I'll get it here. I'll tell you guys to go. Right.